With so much of our business dealings taking place virtually now, we have to rely on experts for credit checks to make sure we're about to do legitimate business with above board companies in good standing. But as Masa Kekana discovered, some credit checks aren't even worth the paper they printed on. Enabling crooks to deceive suppliers and leaving a trail of deception and businesses out of pocket, crooks make off with products after duping even a credit check company into believing they're real. Criminals have taken smoke and mirrors to the next level with an onslaught of fake credit applications targeting businesses in an already strained economic climate. Fraudsters hijack legitimate companies, then apply for credit and make off with hundreds of thousands of rands of stock, leaving only a trail of deception and suppliers out of pocket. These syndicates target suppliers of commodities that are quick to move on the black market. In November last year, Michelle Lineker's industrial supply company had a credit application from a new client for personal protective equipment. So we were approached by the company One World Shining. They followed the procedure, we gave them the credit application. After the applicant submitted all the required documents, Lineker did a commercial search on the company registration number via a web-based service, Accountability. So the deciding factor was that the report was fantastic. They said to us that the account was good for us to give them credit up to two million rand. There was no defaults, there was no judgments, it was perfect. The report also included sections on business identification, company registration details, a bank code summary and trade references amongst others. In your mind, had you done due diligence? Absolutely. I mean, we are paying for a service and we are trusting our business in the hands of accountability so to ensure that what they are doing is correct. So we rely on those reports in order to guide us on whether or not we'll open an account for a customer. The order was delivered in three batches to a warehouse in Eastgate, Johannesburg. With no payments, Lineker realized they've been scammed, but it was too late. The stock was gone. It's, it's devastating. Um, 600,000 Rand is a lot of money, and our business is compromised, our integrity is compromised. All cell phone numbers that we had for contact for people were disconnected. Christo Sneeman is from the International Association of Financial Crimes Investigators. He has noted a spike in this evolving crime trend. It's a full-time job for them. That's what they do every day. You get used to the fact that you can make money easy as what they are doing, and a lot of times not, not getting arrested or, or prosecuted. You know, why would you go and do something else. These syndicates will go to great lengths to appear authentic, even forking out cash for office space in plush suburbs. The fake One World Shining set up offices in Sandton, paying 76,000 Rand for two months' rent and deposit. This particular syndicate posing as the real One World Shining had done credit applications for around 80 million Rand targeting electronics companies, asphalt suppliers, welding equipment suppliers, sugar distributors and stationery companies just to name a few. These fraudsters were so brazen they even met with sales reps tasked with vetting the company before granting credit. Kubus Kurtze works for a local sugar supplier and distributor. He met with them in Santon. I really thought it's a legitimate business. I was met by a receptionist, very professional, contacted the person to tell them I'm here for the appointment. It was people sitting at desks, working like a normal business. Even though the credit was approved, Kurtz's company decided to put the brakes on when the first order for 900,000 Rand came through. The owners went and and they actually looked at their financials and that didn't make sense and that's when we started realizing something might be wrong. They informed the fraudsters that they would only grant credit after three months of cash orders. They asked me to reconsider and we were firm with our decision to say not at all cash and after that never heard from them again. These criminals do not have a fixed address. They constantly change cell phone numbers. They use fraudulent email domains. Um, they know that their time in doing their fraudulent scam is short, so they need to be pretty quickly and they need to be very organized. The offices in Santon had been vacated 
and the fraudsters had disappeared. This is the warehouse facility where suppliers were told to come and deliver their goods. It's in an industrial area surrounded by other warehouses. It looks legit. Let's go see if there's anyone here. We're from Cote Blanche. My name is Masake Gana. We're doing an investigation. We met the owner, Yusuf Jamal, and the accounts manager, Kaya Hadebe, at Toulouse Consulting. We're also trying to find uh, these guys as well. Because Why are you trying to find them? Because they also have an account and an outstanding balance with us as well. Since when? The goods from four different companies valued at over one million rand were received and distributed from this address. Both Jamal and Khadebe claim they were just unwitting middlemen and are owed 70,000 rand for warehousing services provided to the fake One World Shining. And do you guys have any idea where these goods went? And with the emails they communicated, they would say these goods are going to Zimbabwe, they're going to this, this. But never an actual physical address? No. Toulouse Consulting say they too were duped by the paperwork the fraudsters supplied for the credit application. It looked real. From the CIPC documents to the SARS clearance certificate, the financials and even the certified copy of the director's ID. But just because it's certified doesn't mean it's real. While the ID number is correct, this is not Abdul Qadir Yusuf. This is. He is not from India, but from Pakistan. This is not the one world shining letterhead. This is. This is also not the one world shining website. This one is. The actual business address is in Crown Mines, not in Santon. We met the real Abdul Yusuf at his actual warehouse where he's been operational for five years. I do an import and export. I never take any credit from South Africa. Their guy is a fraud guy. I don't know who's that one. But my company is good company. Yusuf first became aware of the fraud in late October when he was contacted by a so-called unpaid supplier. He immediately opened a case with the police. Because now I'm too angry because I never do any fraud in my company. And then it seems like it was you. Yeah, people think it's because it's uh, my, my company. So we are sitting here, we never do any fraud. We, we, we're doing fraud so we can't sit here. You understand? We just run away from here. Who do you blame for the loss? I blame accountability because we relied on them. We paid them for a service and we relied on what they gave us and I blame them completely. Accountability members are promised access to a variety of services whereby you can accurately determine potential clients' credit worthiness before extending them the required trade credits. The incorrect Santon address, along with the incorrect contact details used by the fake One World Shining, were included in the Accountability Commercial Search Report pulled by MECAN in November 2020. Accountability Group Director Devin Kemp spoke to us from Cape Town. Well, the nature of our business is purely risk mitigation. We are the dominant way by service team aiming to protect SMEs and corporates by providing them with tools to reduce the credit risk. Would you say that this is an expert service that you provide? I would say yes. But the details in the report don't check out. We've checked the trade references and the credit reports and we either can't find those companies and the ones we did track down say they've never done business with One World Shining. Interestingly, a trade reference from a Yusuf at a company listed as Toolza that cannot be traced but is similar to the warehousing company Toulouse was included in the report. I don't know anything about it. I haven't spoken to nobody from any credit reference or anything. It seems accountability has some explaining to do. I just would like to understand how was this section compiled, trade on file? You know, I can't disclose that right now because that's a subject to investigation. That you'd ask TransUnion directly. Are you saying those names come from TransUnion? Well, the data in its entirety that is compiled in this report comes from TransUnion. According to Kemp, accountability directly sources data from a number of credit bureaus and white labels the information. He claims the information is simply rebranded in an accountability document and insists the client should verify the information supplied in the reports. Attorney Reginald Chabalala explains it's not so easy to shift liability when offering a so-called expert service. Whether the source of information is transgenian or not, first of all, accountability is the contracting party, Timmy Khan. 
So whether accountability gets its information from a um, third party, um, it, it doesn't really matter. And at the end of the day, the document is theirs and they must own, they must own it. TransUnion responded in writing. They did not specifically answer the questions we posed, but stated the following. We are confident that we followed all applicable procedures in our data collection. And specifically about the Meek and One World Shining case, our review of this matter shows that accountability may have omitted from their report or presented differently certain information provided by TransUnion that could have offered additional context to the credit decision. Accountability is blaming TransUnion, TransUnion is blaming accountability, accountability is blaming us as the customer, and nobody to date has even apologised that this has happened to us or taken responsibility that the trade references that they gave and the report that they gave to us was an excellent account when in actual fact it wasn't. And you've provided this document to your clients. Then you find out that this information is incorrect. Should that not surprise you? That is for the bureau to rectify. It's not for me to justify. The main thing that I need to get through is that it is powered by a bureau that we explicitly state at the bottom. Kemp is adamant that they are covered by their terms and conditions. Are you passing the buck on to TransUnion because you don't want to take any responsibility or accountability? I cannot take, I cannot take responsibility for information that I did not source. You provided it to your clients and as accurate information and you took their money. We've established now that it's not accurate, so... That's actually quite, quite a very um, a stern statement. It's a factual statement because here is an accountability document that is filled with inaccuracies. Okay. Accountability and TransUnion claim there were discrepancies between the report and the credit application completed by the fake company. Chabalala's advice is that businesses should scrutinize every detail of every transaction. Because you are the one who's going to part with goods that you're going to give on credit, it is your responsibility. Uh, don't rely on verification agencies simply because they've got terms and conditions that generally absolve them. Because uh, if you're going to rely on one verification agency to give you 100% information that's going to be 100% proof, you will most likely be disappointed. Thank you for watching our stories here online and please subscribe below to become part of our YouTube community and be notified when we upload our latest content.